or the earnest expectation of the creature wait for the manifestation of the sons of God. Romans 8:19. There is a star in you. Join Pastor Adam. On. The star in you. You will learn what it takes. To expand your vision. Transform your way of thinking. Take your eyes off yourself and your current circumstances. Discover the genius in you. And make your world a better place. The Star in You. Broadcasting soon on NDTV. Tune in, and you will be blessed. Well, God, you once again welcome to your favorite program, The Star in You, on your one number one network, NDTV. I am your host, Pastor Adam, and I'm excited today to once again have you with me. Today, you'll be inspired once again, you'll be motivated, you'll be catapulted to the next level of your elevation. Because I have with me a blessed woman of God. She's about to tell us how you can be great despite your age. I want you to stay glued to your set. Stay glued on air. Invite friends and family to learn today and your life will not be the same. Once again, I'm so much delighted to welcome on set today with me on the program, The Star in You, the one and only <laughs> President Natalia. Iris Mendy. Did I pronounce it well? No, you said it right. <laughs> she is the immediate past president of Lone Star College, student president of Lone Star College, University Park. And she'll tell us more about it. So, you are welcome to the group. Thank you. I, it's nice to be here. Woman and uh, Madam President. <laughs> <laughs> so, who is President Natalia Iris Mendy? Um, so I guess a little bit about myself. Right now, I am going into my junior year of college. I just graduated from Lone Star University Park. So I was a president. Um, now I'm moving on, transferring to another university. I'm not 100% sure where. Um, I am 20 years old. And wow. yeah, it's nice to be here. Wow. Wow. It's this deep. <laughs> um, so I am Colombian born. I was born in Colombia and at the age of seven, my family came here in search of the American dream. Um, thankfully through my dad's job, we were able to come here legally and so um, that's how we came here. <laughs> they wanted wow. a better future for me. Wow, wow. At the age of seven, mm -hmm. um, coming with your parents at the age of seven, what was going through your mind? I mean, did you have expectations? Were you like, wow, I'm going to the States, or you just followed them and you got here and you're like, ooh, it's a, it's a different feeling? So for me, I was on my dad's side. I am the only granddaughter, and mm. so, uh, or I was when we left. And my mom's side is a very big family, but she was a baby, so I was the baby of the baby. Um, and so I, a lot of my family was very focused on me, and so I didn't necessarily want to leave. and. They kind of messed with me a little and they said we were going on vacation and then all of a sudden we never came back. Um, so that was a little bit hard to take in, but um, I guess I didn't really have expectations because I didn't expect to stay here. Um, wow, wow. So, so, so you did not even like want to stay or to you, you never had any expectation because you were just a child. Right. Yeah, I was very young. So what kept you? so much interested in staying in the state then? Um, I mean, after I realized that we weren't going back to Colombia, it was uh, it was difficult at first because it was a very big culture shock. Um, I didn't know any English. I only knew Spanish and my parents didn't know any English. So that was hard because um, I had to go to school and I had to go around all of these kids that did know English. And school has always been a very big emphasis in my family. And so um, in Colombia, I was used to being the top of my class. And so when I got here, kind of being pushed back, that was hard on me. Um, so Talking about culture shocks, <laughs> uh, there, 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 there are a lot to talk about. Right. Culture shocks, um, 
of our language. Mm-hmm. I mean, translating from a Spanish born, I mean, Colombian, and 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 you learning English. How how smooth was it? Um, it wasn't very much. I would come home and I would cry because <laughs> <laughs> cry. Yeah, I was I was a little bit of a crybaby when I was little, but um. No, but more than that, I had wonderful teachers. I was put into my lingual classes. And so academically, I was ahead of all the kids, but because of the language and because of my age, I had to like be pushed back a few grades. Um, then I caught up because I got caught on to English, but I had very good teachers who would even stay after class with me and work on my English. And I, when everything I felt was going crazy because I couldn't control anything that was happening in my life, I put all of my emphasis into school because it was the one thing I could control. Mm. So um, that's why I learned English fairly quickly because I like threw myself all in until I got it. People of God, she threw herself all in into learning English, you know, and that that changed her life because you cannot give half to God. Bible says. If you are lukewarm, I will spill you out of my mouth. You cannot be lukewarm. You cannot be hot and cold at the same time. If, if you commit yourself to something, you must give your all. To, you must give your best to it. You must actually challenge yourself. You must say to yourself, I'm giving my best to God. And when you apply that to everything you do, then the star in you will come out. Every aspect of life, I mean, demands 100%. Yeah. That, that is all we learn today. Every aspect of your life requires 100%, which means that if you give 50%, you are bound to get 50% results. Right. How quick was your transition into, into, into English? I mean, is it weeks? Is it months? Um, for me, it took six months of like repetitive um, worksheets, talking, and then when I came home I had to speak Spanish because my parents didn't know English and I became kind of like the assigned translator and so that was difficult mm. because I was very young. <laughs> um, so I had to learn pretty quickly, yeah, six months tops and that, then I was fluent at that point. Wow, so so if you say suddenly you became the assigned translator, it looks like you even became better than your parents. <laughs> I wouldn't say better, I would say um, I just had more resources than they did at the time. So, yes, at the time I was a little bit more advanced than they were in relation to English. And so we would go to the stores or we would have to order some stuff and I would be the one that had to speak English speak, for them. Yeah, for yeah. them. Wow. <laughs> what are that culture shock you experience? I mean, at a young age, but of course. Right. I mean, what, what are culture shock you experience just moving from Colombia to America? So I think another culture shock that I experienced was um, the people. In Colombia, people are a lot more, I guess, familiar in a sense. First off, I was very used to having a lot of people around me, and I've always been a people person. But um, here it was different in the sense that I feel like people are much more independent. And um, it kind of, that came on to me too. I became a very independent person, and I still am. Um, But that was a very big difference. Colombia and here. Colombia, everyone knows everyone and everyone's mm. trying to help or talk to you. Whereas here it seemed that everyone was kind of on their own. Survival. Yeah. Survival of the fittest. Yeah. Wow. 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 People of God, there is a good in every situation. Another lesson we are learning for your star to shine, you must find the goodness that God puts in every situation. God does not allow anything just to happen to you. We're learning from the woman of God today that when she came to America, another culture shock she experienced was the fact that everybody was busy. Everybody could not, I mean, just love, love on you or give you the attention you need. So then she learned to be independent. And sometimes for your start to shine, you must get to a, a, a portion in life for you to feel like you are alone. And why? Because you must seek God. As soon as you begin to feel like you are alone, God just wants you to know that, listen to me, you need to seek me. So when she felt she's alone, God also put in her the ability 
to rely on him to be able to be independent. And I believe that made her so much a stronger person to even achieve greater things that we are about to talk about today. When we come back from our commercial break, we're going to dive into deeper things and you will learn how she became a strong woman to achieve greater things even at this young age. We'll go in our commercial break and we'll be right back. Stay with us and your life will not be the same. This is the star. How will you feel when you know that someone is praying and interceding for you every day? That is how we hold our partners with high esteem, standing in the gap and praying for you without season. NDTV is God's plan to transform lives and help people to get their freedom from every form of oppression, walk in victory, discover their original destiny and the plan of God for them. Together, we can do far more than any of us could ever do alone. Become a partner today. By visiting www.ndtvn.com slash partnership and you will be glad you did. on Facebook and Instagram at NDTV Network. Subscribe to our YouTube channel New Dimension TV. Or watch us live at www.ndtvn.com. For partnership, prayers, and sponsorship, call 833777NDTV. Email info at NDTVN.com. NDTV. Bearing fruits everywhere, changing lives. Hello, people. God, we are back to your favorite program, The Star. In you, I'm your host once again, Pastor Adum, and I'm excited to have President Natalia Arismendi with me. Woman God, you are welcome once again. Thank you. Hey, so you're telling me about how America made you independent. Mm -hmm. Started to grow in America, in your teens, looking around you. There are opportunities all around compared to Colombia. Right. Did you suddenly begin to over expect the government, your parents, the system to, to be so good to you? Or you, 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 you I mean, you, you, you continue working in your minority mindset, like, oh, okay, I'm from a, maybe a poor country, or maybe oh, my family is not that, that well to do, or, or I'm disadvantaged. Put yourself mentally and physically? I don't think I ever considered myself disadvantaged, even though I know I was at many points in life. Mm -hmm. um, so I know my parents at some point, like when we first got here, we weren't a very high income family or anything like that. But um, I'd never considered myself disadvantaged because I had experienced what disadvantage really was mm -hmm. in Colombia. So um, I think when we came here, everything seemed grand and great. So <laughs> um, I don't think at any point in time did I Yes, I felt kind of marginalized at times because um, my American-born friends had different uh, upbringings and our parents talked the same differently and our parents had a different culture, but um, the opportunities were always there for us, so it was whoever wanted to get them, so I, don't, I didn't ever put myself as an inferior to them. I just kind of attempted what everyone else was as well. Wow. In other words, you, you, you're saying, simply put, no matter what the economy or the system has been designed to do, um, God is fair. God is never biased, people of God. God is fair. God is never biased. There's, there's, there's some level of good that, that is in the system. 
you might feel marginalized, you might feel disadvantaged as a minority. Sometimes even as what, even as, as a majority, you must still be disadvantaged. But if you say to yourself, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, you will still find the goodness in the difficult situation. And then you will never see yourself as a disadvantaged person. I like that. I like that. I believe that mindset also just changed your thinking. It gave you some level of confidence to be able to what? Take up challenges. Right. How did growing up in the church in America contribute to you having a strong personality, the confidence you have? I mean, how how did your volunteering spirit, you know, and the things that you did in church or you could, I mean, you are still doing in church selflessly, I mean, cont contribute to making you a stronger person? So when I was very young, from Columbia to here, um, it has always been instilled in me that God comes first along with family. Mm. So um, when we got here, it was kind of our refuge also because um, their people did speak Spanish and there, there was always a lot of help. So the church was a lot of help when we first got here in the sense that my parents could go there and seek resources mm -hmm. and um, they could talk to people. And that's kind of how we got through a lot of our life at the beginning here because people would, once you knew a certain amount of people, oh you can go here for this opportunity or there's a job here or things like that so um i guess it was the people of god that changed us a lot and then um as i grew older volunteering has been something that i hold very near and dear because i know um not everyone is as privileged or there's always someone that's in a inferior position than you are in the mm -hmm. sense of resources and so um that has also been instilled into me so through like during Harvey, um, I went and did packaging and things like that for Harvey victims at my church because um, I knew there were people in need. And so just throughout my life, we've done a lot of that kind of stuff. Wow. Wow. So so then, another lesson you are teaching us is that, is that stars are in sizes and they are in levels. So then, no matter the level you are, there's somebody who size is lesser or smaller than you. And, and, and when you move to your higher level, then the lesser person comes up to your level. And sometimes your star can only shine when you volunteer. Right. So, so it's not always asking for, asking for remuneration. Mm -hmm. That makes you the best. But sometimes when you sacrifice, it also helps to bring out the best in you. Wow. Wow. At what age did you discover the leadership gift that you have, even as a female, at what age did you discover that, that leadership gift and what do you do about it? I think leadership develops as your life goes on, but I, I think many of us have it to begin with. Honestly, all of us have it, some just discover it a little later than others. Um, I discovered my leadership skills very young because like I said, I had to be independent at a very young age. So I was often um, more mature than most of my other mm. peers because I had to be. Um, so from there, people kind of looked towards me to lead them, even in like elementary and middle school. And so um, when people look towards you, it kind of makes you a leader because it's a sense of responsibility to lead others in the right direction. Naturally, right? Right. Um, <laughs> and then I guess it kind of exploded more in college when I became the Student Government Association at Lone Star. And I had other leadership positions, but that's definitely been my main one. Wow. Wow. If you say people look towards you, can you break that one down? Um, in specific like instances or just in I, I maybe maybe a couple of instances. Okay, well I mean I think when you're a leader you're the example. So also I have a little brother, so just there I was I had to be a leader at home, I had to be a leader at school, it was everywhere. Um but when you're a leader, people look towards you for guidance. So mm, Guidance. Like, right, guidance. So even if that's in a classroom, people look towards you to see how to act or how to behave. And if you can be a leader of a good type or a bad type, and if you're the kind that wants to disrupt the classroom, you can do that. I didn't like being that kind, so I was kind of the one that raised my hand or stayed quiet when I was supposed to. Um, and so people kind of follow when they see that that works well in the classroom or in life, really. Mm, mm. Guidance. Um, what would you say people are looking 
to you um, when it comes to sacrifice as a leader? As a leader in that context, I mean, as a leader, um, in instances where people look up to you, and just to see how you would sacrifice or you were, you were sacrificing. Is there any instance you can share with us? Um, I think in SGA there was a lot of sacrifice of time and so when people see you devoting time to something they are more prone to kind of respect what you're doing and also join in on that. So a lot of my officers, they were great to begin with but um, at first we had kind of a rocky start because it was some of us were putting in more effort than others and then when they saw me like slaving away on things like that along with my vice president and different other officers but um, when people see you really kind of dedicated and devoting your time and sacrificing because I was even sacrificing like a social life at times mm. to work on mm. that kind of stuff um, then they too kind of stepped in and said okay I'll do the same and that's what made us Wow, wow. Well. And, and the program is the star in you the secret is this, as a star, you got. <laughs> as a star, you actually go out of your way to shine. Sometimes you don't want to shine. I don't think the stars want to shine all the time. I mean, if the stars want to shine all the time, we don't have what we call falling stars or shooting stars. Because, because sometimes they want to stay where they are, but they have to move. Right. You know. But as a star, you got. Sometimes you, you have to go out of your way to, 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 to shine. So. In life, God has put into each one of us a star. Even your bad example is a star. Even your bad example is a star. So I like what you're saying. People are looking, looking up to you for guidance. They were looking up to you for what? For 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 sacrifice. So that they could also what, learn how to sacrifice. And for us to get the star in us shining, we must know that our lives that we live, we are to what? To sacrifice, we are to give other people guidance, we are to motivate other people mm -hmm. to also learn from us so that they will not crash on the way. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, wow. Tell me, as a young female leader mm -hmm. in, in, in your family, how did you handle your responsibility? You know, as a, as a young female leader in your family, you, you said you have a younger brother. How did you handle your responsibility as a young female leader? You know, and 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 how did you cope with parental, you know, guidance? Because because as a young female leader, sometimes parents are like, oh, I, I thought my first one would be a boy, and, and, and then you came out to be a girl, and then and then suddenly you're a leader also, you know. So then, what, I mean, how did they handle the fact that you are a female and then you are you're supposed to be a leader, and then? Did they actually lord on you or did they guide you? And then how how did you use your leadership to influence the other people in the family, you know, apart from you know, your parents? Uh -huh. um, so my parents were very, I mean, they were very good to me all my life. So guidance has always been a thing, but it's more of like moral support. I guess academically, they didn't really guide me except for letting me know that it was so important. and. Um, kind of setting the standard that if I didn't do well in school, there would be issues. So, um, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there was a lot of pressure to succeed because of me being an immigrant and because of us making such a big move. Um, so there was pressure, but there was also guidance in the sense that I knew I could count on them. And how I use that to lead the rest of my family. My brother even says now he gets annoyed because he's like, you're setting the standard too high. But, um... <laughs> I think that's good because he knows he has stuff to live up to, but he also knows he has my support in whatever it is that he does. Um, so for me, I know I didn't have that kind of guidance, but he will because like when he's struggling in a class, I can help him. When he doesn't know what kind of classes will help him in the future, I do, so I can help him with that. So it's just, um, it makes you kind of, again, be the guidance and support that other people in your family need. Wow, wow. In parental guidance, where your parent lording on you, strictly, I mean, the courses to do, what to become, like some people to say, mm -hmm. hey, you have to become a doctor, you have to become this, or, or, or it was like a flexible thing. What have you learned from it as a young 
female leader, you know, and you think okay, you can share with, apart from your, your brother, you can share with, I mean, other people as you grow. So, my parents, um, when they came here because of the English and stuff, they had a lot of setbacks in their education and stuff like that. So, for me, it was a very big emphasis that I had to do better than them. So, um, in that sense, I was never, a career wasn't pushed on to me, but um, the idea of, I guess, inferior careers or stuff like that wasn't really an option because I have to make it, like, worth the move. Um, I want to be a lawyer. And that's something I decided on my own, not because of them, but I think because of the pressure to do something big, I guess, um, mm. I kind of aim very high. It's not that they're pressuring me to choose a certain career, but they do pressure me to do the best that I can, I guess. So did you, so you, you of course you chose your own career, right. they did not flood it on you. Where would you say parental guidance comes in? Know, as a leader because of course when you become a parent you must also guide your children um, where would you say parental guidance comes in and then um, the, the flip side is if parental guidance is is okay should we choose our own career just because we want to we, we are touching okay the money benefits alone to it or the experiences that other people have gone through and then they are guiding us to make the right choices I think for a lot of parents, the pressure of um, putting the pressure on people, their kids to um, be a certain career comes from the experience. Many parents are doctors and so they want their kids to be doctors, mm. or many parents are lawyers and they want their kids to be lawyers. And I don't think it's in, um, with bad intentions, I think parents just want the best for you. However, I do think that whatever you do, it has to have a balance of both, because I also, <laughs> For me personally, the monetary thing is not the biggest factor, but it is a factor and we have to be realistic about that. Money um, is something that you're going to need, but more than that, you need to be happy in whatever you're doing. And so um, if you're in a career that makes a ton of money, but you absolutely hate your job, you're never going to live a happy life. So I think there just has to be a, a balance between, um, I guess, the monetary benefits and the life enriching that your job will be. Wow, wow. People of God, for your start to shine, there should be a balance in your decisions. You should not just follow material gains, but also follow what to make you fulfill. Because that will be the best way to get the best in life. We're going on a commercial break again. When we are back, we will dive into student politics. Stay with us. You feel when you know that someone is praying and interceding for you every day. That is how we hold our partners with high esteem, standing in the gap and praying for you without season. NDTV is God's plan to transform lives and help people to get their freedom from every form of oppression, walk in victory, discover their original destiny and the plan of God for them. Together, we can do far more than any of us could ever do alone. Become a partner today by visiting www.ndtvn.com slash partnership and you will be glad you did. expectation of the creature wait for the manifestation of the sons of God. Romans 8:19. there is a star in you. Join Pastor Adam on the star in you. You will learn what it takes to expand your vision, transform your way of thinking, take your eyes off yourself and your current circumstances, discover the genius in you, and make your world a better place. The star in you. Broadcasting soon on NDTV. Tune in, and you will be blessed. You welcome once again, people of God, to the best program, the Star EU, on your favorite TV network, NDTV. I am Postadum, and I am with President Natalia Arismendi. Welcome.
<laughs> Hi. <laughs> wow. So I keep on saying president because in the political world, once a president, always a president. <laughs> you know, and then um, even former president, they are addressed as Mr. President or okay. Madam President. Yeah, so I mean, how do you feel now? Me addressing you as young as you are, as Madam President. <laughs> I mean, it's a nice feeling being addressed as a president. It's always nice. I like your frankness, you know. No. <laughs> you know, because usually people people would say, "Oh, no, no, no. you know, yeah." But I mean, I like your frankness. Um, it's a nice feeling. Can you describe that feeling? Um, I. For a lot of what we do, um, I mean, it's student politics, but still, it was a lot of work. So, um, often you don't seek recognition or anything like that. It's about the job. But when someone does recognize it, it feels nice. Wow. <laughs> wow. Do you feel, do you feel like I worked for it and I deserve it? Or you feel like, oh, it's just one of I mean, I worked for it. I wouldn't say that I absolutely deserve to be called Madam President by the rest of the world. I don't think that's a thing. I don't need the acknowledgement. I know that um, I know the work I put into it, and I know the work that my team put into it. But um, again, it's just it's just a nice feeling. It doesn't mean that I <laughs> I want everyone to address me that way. I know, I know. Um, tell me about the campaign. Tell me why you contested. Tell me how you guided your team. Tell me about the challenges, you know. Um, I learned one thing about America. American politics is also fundraiser, you know. So tell me about that side also, the challenges. And your strategy, the strategy you used to win, you know. Tell me. So for the Student Government Association, I'll probably refer to it as SGA. But um, for SGA, it is all of the campus basically has to vote for you. And so it's a campaign, it's an election. Um, the person who's contesting me, I think the major thing that you have to do is be about the people because if you're going to be a president that's not about the people, then there's no point in being president. Mm. And so um, I, why I ran was because I was, um, I was part of, I am part, well, I guess now I was part of the Honors College um, at Lone Star University Park. And because of that, I saw such a great environment and a lot of people uh, pushing each other to be the best that they could be. But then once you stepped out of the Honors College, the Lone Star University Park is a great place to be. Mm. There was a lot Say of... Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Lone Star University Park was a great place to be. Um, there was differences that I saw between the Honors College, was a, which was a very smaller group, and the rest of Lone Star. And so I kind of wanted to make an environment that was better for everyone so that they too could feel the way that we felt about going to Lone Star. Um, so the campaign, I was very focused on people, I guess, and so it was kind of weird because I wasn't used to going up to random people in the hallways and just being like, hi, I'm running for president. Mm -hmm. um, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Please vote for me. And so that was strange, but that was mostly my method. It was mm -hmm. more about the people. It was talking to the people, and it was um, explaining what I wanted to do on campus so uh, people would consider voting for me. Wow, wow. So then you believe one on one is the approach. Right. One on one is the approach, the best approach that you use. How did you gather your team and um, what what motivated your team? You know, what are the challenges that the team faced? And then um, uh, one of the strategies is one on one. What are some of the other strategies that you use? You know, because as a leader, you must be innovative. As a leader, you must have ideas. You know? Right. Yeah. Um, I think. So for my team, I didn't recruit them. They too were running. Um, some of them I did know a little closer, and so I kind of emphasized, hey, you should run for SGA. But um, individually, they wanted to be student leaders as well. Um, so it was already a group that was that was good because personally they were they were good leaders already. Um, some of our difficulties, I guess, were getting the word out. Our past SGA wasn't very uh, known, so that's kind of, that's bad because SGA is supposed to represent all of the student voices, and if people don't even know where they're supposed to go, they can't get listened to. Mm -hmm. So um, 
that was a big thing for us, getting the word out about who SGA even was so that people would have a place to go um, seek help or concerns or questions, etc., etc. Uh, I don't remember the rest of the questions you just asked, so... Yeah, um, how did you gather your team, you know, and um, uh, of course, you told me about the challenges, the other strategy that you put into it, you know, as a leader, because I believe you being a female, and I, I guess your vice president is a guy, you mm -hmm. know, uh, and all that, um, how you convince them to come on board and believe in, in, in your dream, you know, and then apart from the one-on-one the, the -on -one campaigning, some of the strategies you know you use um, was there a challenge of financing and 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 how did you know how did you handle all that? So for student politics, it's a little bit different different in the sense that campaigning, I guess you can't really put money into it. Um, mm -hmm. So we didn't struggle with financial aspects. We struggled with finances. I guess later once we got a budget and stuff for SGA, but. Um, during our campaign process, we didn't struggle with that. Again, like I said, how I recruited them, I some of them I knew and some of them, they're all student leaders regardless, so mm -hmm. they too wanted to run for this. Um, and I guess besides the one-on-one -on -one method, it would be publicizing and innovating ideas. Like For us, a lot of the things that got people there was food. <laughs> as simple as that, just realizing what people need and want and kind of employing that so you can attract them. Come again. <laughs> so um, for like our meetings and our events and stuff like that, we had food or we had events that oh. were that related to people. So just have to make things relatable to the audience you're trying to reach, I guess. That's what I was trying to say. Mm -hmm. So then it means even though student politics is a bit different, mm -hmm. to some extent, there should be some way to fund it because food is, is also mm -hmm. is funding, you know, and 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 who are your main sponsors? I mean, probably that's probably the best way to ask the question. Who okay. are your main sponsors and how did you get them on board? Sponsoring you to feed people at events and I mean probably print out some maybe one or two, you know, flies here and there. How did you fund that? So for us, um, again, for just any RSO, I guess, that's registered student organization. Um, you have to do a presentation to basically um, a board of a committee who gives you the money, um, the budget for the school, and this is taxpayers' money, so it's very um, specific, I guess, and they're very fiscally responsible. And so you have to give a presentation and explain every single thing that you're trying to ask money for. For us, it was a little bit complicated because um, our previous SGA hadn't asked for enough I guess and so we had to redo that and ask for reserve money um, so long story short basically you do a presentation but then also we created a something called a digital food pantry mm -hmm. and so what that is is um, it's a food pantry but we wanted to remove the stigma of college students are often the most broke type of students but they're often the most prideful so they don't want to ask for help um, <laughs> I like that. So say that again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, college students often don't have the monetary benefits, but um, they're too prideful to ask for help. Mm. So for us, um, what we did, this digital food pantry, is basically a food pantry like you would at the Houston Food Bank, but it's digital, so everything is done through online, the application, the distribution, mm -hmm. all of that. Um, and it's like gift cards instead of actual canned food, because just having canned foods makes a lot of people kind of uncomfortable and feel like less and so we wanted to remove that stigma and for that we needed sponsors and so we contacted a lot of um, community people like HEB, Kroger's, things like that and so we had to draft a lot of papers mm. explaining what we wanted to do and I guess we had to be very passionate about it because people we needed to get people to believe in our cause. And so. Wow, wow. People of God, every star needed support. Every star needs some kind of a support. They stepped out of their boundary and their comfort and they, they actually solicited for help. The star in you will shine if you can connect to the right people and you can ask for help from the right what quarters. That's a, that, that's a lesson we are learning today. So then HEB and other people were on board okay. and they supported. Wow. Um, final commercial break when we come back we're going to conclude on a good note stay with us
Hope this network has been a blessing to you. Why not follow us on Facebook and Instagram at NDTV Network. Subscribe to our YouTube channel New Dimension TV. Or watch us live at www.ndtvn.com. For partnership, prayers, and sponsorship, call 833777NDTV. Email info at ndtvn.com. everywhere changing lives. Back on set on your favorite program, The Star in You. Woman of God, we're talking about how your predecessors actually did not prepare the ground for you to have a firm and a good start. Mm -hmm. What are the challenges that you inherited? What are some of the challenges that you inherited from your predecessors as a student leader? You know, and then how did you turn it around by the end of your term? Um, what are some of the achievements that you can you can list for us? Right. So for us, um, first off, a major one was the lack of guidance because mm. our predecessors, um, once they were done, they kind of just went on with their life, and so we didn't know exactly what it was that we were trying to do or what we were doing, and so that was very difficult for us because we had to figure out first what it was that we were trying to do, how it all worked and then from there actually trying to employ whatever it was that we were trying to achieve. So um, that was difficult for us and we turned it around by relying on each other. It was mm. a lot of support mm. back and Team forth. Work. Right. Because um, I couldn't do it alone and they couldn't do it alone. So it was leading but also leaning on each other to um, kind of get through the late nights and the early mornings and the long days and all of that. Um, and then another thing was the lack of monetary support because mm. our previous SGA hadn't really um, asked for enough. And so many of our events didn't have food or anything like that, but it kind of made us work harder on our events mm -hmm. too. So, Motivated you. Right. Um, so even if we didn't have the food or things like that, it made us have events that were so good that people wouldn't avoid them. So mm. even if it didn't have food, they would want to be there regardless. Um, so that's how we turned that around and then second semester we had, we were able to ask for more money so then that was fine. Um, and then the guidance thing, we made sure this incoming SGA, because mm. we know we work so hard on SGA and on rewriting a constitution and doing all of that, um, we made sure that they have the guidance and we're still talking to them and we're still um, kind of helping them through it because we know it's a difficult process and SGA is a lot to take on. So. Um, we're definitely guiding them through it. And a few of our accomplishments at the end, the digital food pantry is a big one because it's an initiative that Lone Star previously didn't have, or Lone Star University Duke Park. And then um, we did many different things like immigration seminars, mm. um, STEM awesome. seminars, so things that people actually need and many people wouldn't reach out and try to seek those resources. But like by bringing the immigration seminar to campus, there was a lot of... I think in this very politically divided world, um, we just need awareness. There's too much ignorance. And so um, by bringing that to campus, people were able to see it kind of in front of them. Mm. And so they had the opportunity to listen and to ask questions and to just not feel uncomfortable and wondering about, instead of just questioning things, they could actually ask a reliable resource about those type of questions. So I think that was a very big thing that we did. Wow, wow. That was this lack of knowledge, my people perish. Which means that sometimes it, 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 it does not mean you are not a star. You are a star. There's something you, there's something good in you, but you lack knowledge. You lack information about that area. And that, that alone is, 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 is handicapping. You know, it, 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 it will cripple you because you lack information. What she did on campus she brought immigration seminary 
our seminar to campus and that was informing people about what they need to know about immigration status mm -hmm. and, and and that is enlightening because for the star in you to shine you must be informed about your area wow wow after graduation this year what next i heard you saying i want to become a lawyer uh, but what next five years from now so five years from now that actually would hopefully be when i'm graduating from law school i want to be an immigration lawyer so wow. um right now i'm still working with i've had internships with a congresswoman and with um a mentor ivan sanchez and he was the immigration liaison for the congresswoman so um it kind of led me in the direction that I want to go, so I'm pretty solid on the fact that I want to be an immigration lawyer. I know I'm very passionate about it. Um, so in five years, I would hopefully be graduating from law school and hopefully finding a job um, in that field. <laughs> um, what do you think about um, entrepreneurship? What do you think about... Oh, I'm not, I'm not looking for a job after internship or after your your residency or something like that and then and then I have my own chamber. What do you think about that? What do you mean? What do they think about that? I don't understand the question. I mean Sorry. it's of the normal thing, the normal tradition. Well five years from now after school, uh, I'll be looking for a job. Mm -hmm. What do you think about after serving or after your residency or intention as a as a young lawyer or something like that? Would you consider having your own chamber, your own law firm. Practice? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I think before I start my own practice or anything like that, that is an ambition of mine. I want to have my own law firm, but um, I love traveling and I've been able to experience that throughout these years. And so I think before I kind of try to work on a business, I would like to travel and to do, I guess, the normal job at first um, because it would allow me to travel and things like that. So. Um, in five years, I don't think I would be starting a law firm just because I want to be able to focus on other things first. And then I would like to start my own business when I'm ready to have a family. And I'm going to catch you, but I'm going to, oh. I'm, I'm going to uh, surprise you. Okay. You know, uh, so what happened to the, to, the, to, the, to the aspiration to work in the UN? Well, that's there. That's just not in the five year plan. Um, so that's like a 10 year? Yeah, I guess it would. I would like to have some practice in the law area, in the law field, before I tried to become a UN diplomat. Because, again, I think being informed is the biggest thing, and I would really like to know what I'm talking about if I want to go into the United Nations. Because that is my last ambition. I would like to go um, work for the United Nations or be a diplomat in the United Nations. So. Um, yeah, I would definitely like to get experience before I try to do that. So it's not in the five year plan, but That's it's a little ten. bit longer. Okay. Yeah. So in the ten, where does the where, where does a political aspiration come in? And uh, by ten years from now, how many languages? We spoke about that too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how many languages? Wow. Okay, I don't have it all figured out, but um, right now I'm learning French, and I know Spanish, and I know English, and wow. so um, at that point I would hopefully be fluent in French. <laughs> Um, and I think I would like to learn another one after that. Four would be nice. Um, Maybe Portuguese? I think I would do something more... I'm not... I guess not the biggest fan, but still, I think I would like to do something challenging, like Mandarin or something like that. Oh, okay. okay. Any fears Any fears as a young upcoming young female leader? Any fears, if you have any fears? Um, I think for a lot of females, what we'll experience is our achievements being brought down to kind of like our gender. A lot of things can be attributed to things other than what you're doing, I guess. And with females, there's more, um, with men, it's a terrible thing, but I think the judgment happens less than it does for women. And so mm -hmm. I think just a misstep or anything like that, a lot of people will judge it differently. So um, that's a fear just kind of making a mistake that is going to define my whole life because people do that. And then just kind of my achievements being um, regarded as something other than what they are. Yeah, yeah. So finally then, then why don't you then use this platform to encourage other young upcoming, you know, female, I mean, aspiring leaders, right. you know, and then uh, acknowledge your family, your, your school and your church. Okay. 
Um, well, I think the biggest thing for all of us is to dream big. Mm. I know that sounds cliche, but it's not because I think we limit ourselves all too often with thinking that we can't do something. Um, but if you don't try, you're never going to even know if you could have. So definitely for all of the youth and even adults, uh, don't limit yourself and try to dream as big as you can, but set goals that are realistic to reaching those big dreams. Um, and yeah, that's my biggest one. Just dream as big as you can and try because, um, nothing beats a failure, but a try. Um, and finally, thank you to my parents and, uh, Mateo. Thank you because without you guys, I wouldn't be here or be anyone in this world. Everything I do is because of you and for you. Um, my church, Champion Forest Baptist Church, uh, they're just great people and they're all around trying to make the world a better place. Um, and my friends, you know who you are. You have been the biggest support through college and through everything, keeping me sane. Um, and mentors such as Ivan Sanchez and many other people that I just can't name everyone. But thank you to Lone Star University Park for giving me this opportunity. Thank you once again, God, my <laughs> president, Natalia, Aramenzi. We are so glad we've come to an end of another exciting episode of your favorite program, The Star in You. We've learned a lot today. And I know you will not miss the next opportunity to be with us on this number one network, NDTV. Keep on watching, keep on sharing, and keep on spreading the good news. We need sponsors, we need supporters. Send me a mail into my mail star in you at ndtv.com and i will hook up with you like us on facebook follow us on twitter and then go to our youtube and keep watching and subscribing next time i'll have you once again on this favorite program and on this number one network ndtv with me pastor Adun, on the star in you see you god bless you for the earnest expectation of the creature wait for the manifestation of the sons of God. Romans 8:19. There is a star in you. Join Pastor Adam. On. The star in you. You will learn what it takes. To expand your vision. Transform your way of thinking. Take your eyes off yourself and your current circumstances. Discover the genius in you. And make your world a better place. The Star in You. Broadcasting soon on NDTV. Tune in, and you will be blessed. Are you looking for a professional, affordable and reliable video coverage for your event? Then, talk to us today at NDTV. Our production team are on ground 24 hours for your corporate and church events. With our modern equipment and unbeatable online presence, we can live streaming your event on every social media platform to give you maximum audience and worldwide publicity. Contact us for your next event and receive 50% discount. Call plus 1833777 and DTV. Visit www.ndtvn.com Email us, events at ndtvn.com We can also handle all your video production projects, including gospel music video production and editing. Call, plus 1833777 NDTV. Visit, www.ndtvn.com Quality professional and customer satisfaction guaranteed how will you feel when you know that someone is praying and interceding for you every day that is how we hold our partners with high esteem standing in the gap and praying for you without season ndtv is god's plan to transform lives and help people to get their freedom from every form of oppression walk in victory discover their original destiny and the plan of god for them together we can do far more than any of us could ever do alone. Become a partner today. By visiting www.ndtvn.com slash partnership and you will be glad you did.
us on Facebook and Instagram at NDTV Network. Subscribe to our YouTube channel New Dimension TV. Or watching us live at www.ndtvn.com. For partnership, prayers, and sponsorship, call 833777NDTV. Email info at ndtvn.com.